In 1892, Grover Cleveland would regain the presidency, being the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. He campaigned on ending the McKinley Tariff, and voters went with him, electing him back into office over Harrison. A month after Cleveland took office, the U.S. economy would be hurt by the Panic of 1893. The Panic of 1893 was a major depression from the gold drain due to the coinage of silver and a collapse of railroad stocks. At the peak of the depression, Jacob Coxey led a group of unemployed citizens, known as Coxey's Army, to D.C., which was the first protest of its kind, demanding that the government help those who were out of work. Cleveland didn't believe this was the federal government's job. The biggest debate in the 1890s dealt with the coinage of silver. A new party, the Populist Party, formed in support of the farmers. It was a third party that also wanted bank regulation, government ownership of the railroads, and unlimited coinage of silver, as well as an income tax. They nominated James Weaver as a third party candidate in 1892. Cleveland saw that the coinage of silver led to economic problems, and so supported gold alone. By the time Cleveland left office, the populists would join with the Democrats, and the pro-business Bourbon Democrats, led by Grover Cleveland, would lose support. The coinage of gold versus silver would be an issue in 1896. In the Panic of 1893, Coxey's army shows that a segment of the population was looking to the government to support those who were unable to support themselves. In addition, the Pullman strike in 1894 was led by socialist Eugene V. Debs. The strikers blocked the rail cars. Some of those cars had U.S. mail on. Grover Cleveland sent in federal forces to make sure that the mail was sent through. This upset many of the workers who believed that Cleveland was too pro-business and against the workers. Cleveland had arrested Debs. Debs being a socialist shows that there was a movement in the country for greater government control and redistribution of wealth. Cleveland fought for the repeal of the Silver Act, which he accomplished as the U.S. was under threat of bankruptcy. Cleveland went to J.P. Morgan for a loan. Morgan saved the economy by bailing out the United States Treasury, keeping the U.S. from default. Cleveland was smart to go with Morgan, and Morgan showed his patriotism by helping his country. However, Cleveland would be linked with Eastern industrialists who wanted the gold standard. The pro-farmer, pro-silver populist party would merge into the Democrat Party's pro-agricultural wing, while pro-business Democrats went to the Republican Party, which supported entrepreneurship. Grover Cleveland, who was pro-business and pro-gold, lost popularity since he got associated with the Eastern industrialists, but he did prevent the nation from default with J.P. Morgan's bailout.